how to release your faith to unlock the power of God. You realize that faith has a magnetic effect, which is its effect is like a magnet that attracts an iron. And when it comes to our faith, our conviction in God, it attracts the power of God. It means that once I release my faith, I drop from the power of God. It is like going to the well. For when you go to the well to draw water out of the well, when you dip in what you use to draw water, that is like faith attracting, then you draw out of that well the water you need. And our faith, once it's released, it draws the power of God for every single need that we have. How can you release the power of God? Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Uwem Akban. If this is your first time watching, I am so glad to have you watch today's video. If you have not yet subscribed, do so and hit the subscribe button and let's get right into today's video. Now, I want to talk about how to release your faith to unlock the power of God in your life. The truth is that I was reading this story of the woman with the issue of blood and it so came alive to me. I've heard this preached so many times, but this particular time, all I was hearing was that it is not about the limitation on the power of God. It is not as if the power of God is lacking to bring the miracle, to preserve, to protect, to provide and give us all the things that we need. But it's as a result of our faith not being released. And now I was asking myself, how then can someone release his or her faith? And that is what I want to talk about in today's video. Now I realize that faith has a magnetic effect, which is its effect is like a magnet that attracts an iron or that attract the materials that it does attract. And when it comes to our faith, our conviction in God, it attracts the power of God. And then through this story, Jesus said to that woman, your faith has made you well. Now, that is what caught my attention. At first, I thought that Jesus was giving her like credit for her having faith. Then I realized, no, Jesus is giving us a cheat code, like he is giving us the way to attract the power of God. So now he is not saying my power has made you well through your faith. He didn't even try to beat around the bush, but he said your faith has made you well. He did not say my power has made you well or I have healed you. He said your faith. That again is what caught me. And I was like, our faith can attract the power of God. Because in the story, it talked about how Jesus felt virtue, power left him. And he said, something has happened. Somebody has touched me. So how can we unlock God's power in our life to experience the breakthrough we are praying for? This year, I actually said that the word for the year for me is exponential increase. How can I now release my faith? to unlock the power of God, to experience exponential increase in my life. Before I go into telling you how to release your faith to unlock the power of God, I will let you know that as it was laid on my heart, that faith is a privilege for us to actually experience God, to experience God's power, to experience all of God. It is not an entitlement such that it would be like, God, I have faith in you. Why have you not done this? God, I've been believing you for this. Why have you not done that? It is not an entitlement. It is a privilege that you and I have to go to God, to please God. Because scripture says, for without faith, it is impossible to please God. But with faith, anyone that comes to God in faith knows that he exists. That's Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Now, talking about this, it means that once I release my faith, I drop from the power of God. It is like going to the well for the people who knows, like in Africa, there's a lot of that. In Nigeria, as I'm a Nigerian, when you go to the well to draw water out of the well, when you dip in what you use to draw water, that is like faith. Attracting, then you draw out. Of that well the water you need and our faith once it's released it draws the power of god for every single need that we have how can you release the power of god in matthew chapter 9 it speaks about the story of that woman now jesus was going somewhere jesus was not going to meet this woman he was going to jairus house a leader of the jews who called for him to come and raise his daughter who was sick now, this woman just came in. She came in and unlocked the power of God for our own need. 
Now she has been suffering for 12 good years, spending her money. It wasn't like she was suffering and she did not try to do anything to help herself. She had tried all the options that she had. And then instead of things getting better, it went worse. And because nothing was working, she did not know any other thing to do. But then the scripture says, So Jesus and his disciples got up and went with him, that's Jairus. Just then, a woman who had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding came up behind him. She touched the fringe of his robe. For she thought, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Jesus turned around and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be encouraged. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was healed at the moment. Now, the truth is that how to actually release your faith is seen in this story what this woman did. The first thing I'll give to you on how to release your faith is for you to know that in order to release your faith, you have to change your mind. What do you think? What are you thinking? What is the voice in your head? The Bible says that she thought to herself, when I touch him, when I touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. That was so affirmative. That was a conviction. That was faith being released. She said, as soon as I have opportunity to touch him, I'm going to unlock his power. Now, it is us telling ourselves what has been the mental picture in your brain. Is it worry? Is it you thinking it's not going to work? Then when you go to God, you pray to God, Oh God, make this to work. As if you are trying to fight the doubt inside your head. As if you are trying to fight the voice inside your head that is telling you, This thing is not going to work. Just stop it. No. You have to work out the voice in your head. And then once you're thinking to yourself, that is where your faith should start. The Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds and imaginations and high thoughts that are against God. Now, whenever any thought comes to you that is trying to make you disbelieve God, that is trying to make you think less of God or think less of yourself or think less of the fact that you and God have an intimate relationship, that He loves you so much that He will not allow you to go through pain to face some, you know, situation. Even if He does that, you should know that if God allows you to go through some situation, it is out of love, not because He does not love you. But if there are negative voices in your head, this is not me trying to tell you become positive or force yourself to become positive, but change the narrative in your head. Because if the narrative in your head is not changed, you cannot release faith. Even when you pray, you cannot release faith. You only try to fight the doubt when you are praying. In your prayer, you only be trying to try to convince yourself or to convince God to do things for you. But then, if you really believe, if you truly believe and know God, because this kind of conviction does not just come. This kind of conviction comes because you know God. The Bible in other accounts in Mark and Luke talked about the fact that this woman heard about Jesus. She has already heard about the fame of Jesus, his healing power and everything and how he is compassionate towards the people. How the love he has for the people will make power go out of him to heal people. Then she has heard all these good things about Jesus and she told herself, This man, once I have the opportunity, to touch him. It should be a thing that, you know, comes like a reality to us that when I have the opportunity to meet with God, when I pray to God, this situation is changing. That is faith being released. I believe that God can do this. When I pray to him, when I open my mouth and pray to him, God will do this. When I open my, out, my mouth and ask for the will of God. Now, I might take a little time here to talk about this. Because the will of God, if you don't know the will of God concerning your healing, you will not receive your healing. You will not be able to release your faith. The Bible says by his stripes you were healed, which means before you were even sick, there is healing available for you. Which means you have the opportunity to have even walk in health and not even become sick. Even when you feel the symptom, the sickness can't take you down because you can rebuke it and let the sickness know it does not belong in your body. When there is lack, you have the right to, to proclaim the favor of God, the unprecedented favor of God for him to make provision for you in ways that yourself cannot even fathom. 
Now, there are so many things that we can talk about in this line, about you changing the narrative in your head, what you are telling yourself, or what people have told you, or what the voice is speaking inside your ears. That is why Paul Apostle in Philippians said to the people in Philippians, and now dear brothers and sisters, one final thing, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. And when I think about this scripture, I think about it as if it is the way for you to analyze how you think and the voice in your head, what you are telling yourself, whatever is true. So whenever a voice is speaking in your head, is it true? Not true to your condition, like as opposed to is it a fact in your life? Maybe you are going, you are, you are having lean finances and then you are poor. Yeah, that's a fact that you don't have money, you are poor. But then that is not the truth. The truth is that the Bible says that for your sake, Jesus became poor so that you would become rich. He left his riches and came down to become poor. Now that is what is true. So your situation of being poor is not accepted. Is it noble when the thought comes into your head that tells you that you should feel the shame, that you should blame yourself, that you know you're not worthy? That God doesn't love you. And then you feel all this shame engulfing you. Is that thought noble? Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is worthy of praise, think about these things. So if they are not, delete. <laughs> if they are not, remove those thoughts. Now, once you remove them and start putting in thoughts that are true, thoughts that are noble, thoughts that are excellent, which is thoughts that are in line with the word of God. Now, you can think to yourself, when I sit to pray, I am releasing my faith. I'm releasing my faith and I will attract the power of God. Amen. Number two, in releasing your faith to attract the power of God, you need to know that God is willing. One of the problems we have is not us having issue with the ability of God. We know that God is all powerful. We know that God is able but most times still talking about the thoughts in your mind, which you need to correct, the narrative in your mind. You still think, is God willing to do this for me? I know he is able, but I'm not sure that he is willing to do it. Now, a story in Matthew chapter 8 talked about a leper who went to Jesus and he asked Jesus this straight question. Now, let me read that scripture in Matthew chapter 8 concerning that leper. Matthew 8 from verse 1 says, Large crowds followed Jesus as he came down the mountainside, which is after Jesus was teaching the sermon on the mount in Matthew. He came down the mountainside and large crowd followed him. Suddenly, a man with leprosy approached him and knelt before him. Lord, the man said, If you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. Now, this man was not doubting the ability of Jesus to heal him. He knows this man has authority. He knows he is powerful. But he was doubting his willingness to actually heal him. You know, take for example, someone you know has an ability, maybe one of your uncle, that he has ability to give you an appointment or to, you know, raise you up financially or to offer you some help that you need. But you know that he is not willing. You, you always know he's not willing. It is actually... You no, know, a defeated thought to think about going to the uncle to still ask for help because you already feel like he's not willing to help me. So what is the need? Which means if you even go to him, it is only to prove yourself right for the thought that you had that he is not willing when he rejects helping you. I, I hope you get this. Or secondly, maybe you are just going to him benefit of a doubt. Let me just try this out. To mock him. Let me mock him. I know he's not going to do it, but let me just go say it. Uncle, help me with this so that I will mock him when he says no. Oh, my rich uncle. Now, bring that thought to us, thinking about, is God willing to help me? So if you're already thinking God is not willing to do anything good for you to help you, why are you praying? If you feel like God is not willing to bring the miracle to you, why do you pray? Hmm. I know that's a hard question. But that is why you need to know that for you to release your faith for the miracle, you need to know that God is willing. Now, Jesus, <laughs> I love the Lord. He is so lovely. 
The Bible says Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said. Jesus actually resolved, like dissolved those doubts in his head. And I want you to hear him tell you. Read that scripture again. Matthew chapter 8. And when you get to that place that Jesus said, I am willing, put it to yourself. That you are asking him, Lord, are you willing to heal me? Are you willing to help me? Are you willing to take me out of this situation? Are you willing to uplift me? Are you willing to give me promotion? And hear him say, I am willing. I am willing. So that you can respond, Lord, let your will be done. Release your faith. Knowing that he is willing. I am willing, he said, be healed. And instantly the leprosy disappeared. Now, our Lord Jesus has the power. He is able. So you need to know that he is willing also. After you know that God is able, you believe that he is willing. Why is he willing? Because you might start thinking about your situation now. And you might tell yourself, I am not worthy for him to do this for me. There are other people that are better than me. You know, in the religious sense, you can feel like that sister or that brother deserves this. I don't deserve this. I don't deserve Jesus helping me. I don't deserve him doing this for me. I know he is willing, but not for me. And I want you to know that he is willing to do it for you just because he loves you. And you need to repeat that to yourself. This is how you release your faith, beloved friend, beloved brother, beloved sister. As you're watching this video, I want you to know Releasing your faith is about understanding him. He is willing to do it for you. Why? Just because he loves you. And you can tell yourself, Lord, just because you love me, I know you are willing to help me. Just because you love me, you are willing to take away this pain. Just because you love me, you are willing to do this for me, so I receive it. I receive it. That is you releasing your faith and unlocking the power of God and receiving the healing you need and receiving the miracle you need. This is a reality to me because this came to me and I'm sharing this because it came to me. It is a posture that I'm adopting for myself that I need to release my faith to actually experience the supernatural power of God at work in my life at every single moment of my life. Now, in conclusion, let me give you these few thoughts that I have. Faith is not passive but faith is actually active faith is about now and it's an ongoing thing it is not like in the past oh since i believed yesterday so that's enough that covers my no every day every moment every second is the conviction that you know him and without faith it's impossible to please him so i always have to you know release my faith to him on everything that is why scripture says pray without ceasing it's the posture of keep on releasing your faith to him. Lord, I believe you're going to do this. Lord, I believe you're strong. I believe you're able. I believe you're powerful. And I believe you're willing. And I believe you love me. Faith is not passive. Faith is active. So in the line of that thought, you need to know for those of us that used to say, if God wants to do this for me, he will do it. Faith is not passive. If God wants to help me, he will help me. Faith is not passive. If God wants to deliver me, he will deliver me. Faith is not passive. It is active. God wants to deliver you. Now you've heard that he is willing. You need to now release your faith so that you can receive his power that is unlocked for you to receive the change you are expecting. Not you staying in a passive place. If God wants to do it for me, since he says he loves me, he should do it. No, it is not passive. It is active. If Abraham sat down somewhere, if God wants to give me a child, he will give me a child like he promised. You may not even receive it. But he was not weak in his faith, like scripture says in Romans, that he did not give up his faith. He still believed. After a while, he asked God, what are you going to give me? You promised me a son I've not yet seen. What is going to be my reward? <laughs> so you need to come to a place of knowing in this loving relationship with your father, he is willing to help. He is willing to heal. He is willing to deliver. He is willing to protect, to preserve. But then you need to release your faith as it goes. Because if not that, God would not ask us to pray. He would just do everything we need because he knows it for us without us opening our mouth to pray or even asking for anything because he loves us that much. Lastly, faith is deliberate, not by chance. Faith is deliberate. Not by chance. Now, 
from the story of this woman, you realize that this woman was very deliberate. That she made up her mind that once I touch his garments, I'm going to be healed. And then she went ahead, deliberately went ahead looking for Jesus. And in the midst of the crowd, she thrown herself in. And for the people who understand a little theology, you would know that with her issue, according to the Jewish law, because that was the culture at the time, she was not allowed to go outside because of her issue. Because if she were to be caught, she would be stoned to death. But then she took that risk. That was a deliberate act. She stepped out of her house knowing that she could die. But she was like, if I stay inside, I may still die. So in your life, you need to come to a place of deliberate faith, not faith by chance. And deliberate faith is like a muzzle that is built deliberately. You are going to the gym every day and you are exercising your faith every day. You have a little headache, you exercise your faith by stripes, I am healed. You have a little challenge, you are exercising your faith and you're speaking to your father and you're speaking with your father and you know that it is deliberate. Now, scriptures in Luke actually pointed that out very well, which I said, okay, I'm going to read that. The Bible says, when the woman touched Jesus, Jesus turned around and was looking for her. He said, somebody touched me. And here in Luke's account, he said, but Jesus said, someone deliberately touched me, for I felt healing power go out from me. So God himself, the Lord himself knows deliberate faith. And we need to come to a place that we are having deliberate faith towards him. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope this video is a blessing to you. And then you've gotten something from it, value from it. Let me know in the comment section what has blessed you about this video. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and share it to your friends and your family and to people you know who really need this encouragement and this mind and heart posture for themselves so that they can come to a place of releasing their faith to receive the miracles of God. Thank you. And I pray that God's miracle will not elude you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Bye.